uh, I didn't propose this expansion. Uh, it was not my deal. You know? I was perfectly satisfied with practice and everything that happened in Colorado. But it is what it is. You know? I read the, like that, the same map uh, that you saw that had the million acres that just scared everybody. And I've been trying to be involved in the constructive process to try to bring it to an end. Uh, some people might have thought that uh, doing Musgrave Snow there would end the whole story, but frankly, one, it was in the wrong place, and two, uh, it would have just uh, kicked the can down the road for another year for further deliberation. And so my view is that with uh, the roadmap that I've created, we'll come to a conclusion with respect to this issue, so it won't be hanging around people's heads anymore. Okay? And I want to say, Probably five or six things in response to some of the questions and comments. And let me just say at the outset that I appreciate the, how heartfelt uh, your comments uh, are and, and the love that you have for um, the land that is yours uh, and, your, and your family. Um, and I appreciate you spending uh, the afternoon with me. But I want to take you through um, four or five, six things. Um, and then actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about the farm that you guys are interested in talking about something that goes beyond the opinion um, First of all, on advice on what to do, it's going to move forward uh, in terms of uh, the uh, roadmap that I've created in this legislation, which I thought was uh, the most thoughtful way forward. And my advice in terms of uh, what you all ought to do is to uh, keep yourselves informed. As I said to uh, you, I will make sure that uh, whatever information I have as your U.S. Senator, is information that is available to all of you. So I will ask you for patience as we uh, walk through this process. Secondly, um, many of you raised the question about uh, believability and uh, credibility. And uh, you know, it was my language, uh, my intent, that wrote in the General Accounting Office review. And that's because I knew you would be asking these kinds of questions. Uh, is the GAO an independent entity or is it not? Well, you know, it was Senator John Warner from Virginia and I who wrote in the benchmark requirements with respect to Iraq. And the GAO, on its own, independent from the Department of Defense and, uh, uh, and General Affairs and others, came up with its own findings with respect to Iraq on the benchmark. And they were very different and they were independent. And so what I can assure you is that you're going to have an independent review this time, where the Gary, in response to the concern that you have. Is, it a, is this just a rubber stamp of uh, the Army, or is it not? No. This is a real deal when you have the GAO, GAO conducting uh, this independent review. Three, uh, many of you raised the question about um, the 2005 BRAC report, and uh, why not just accept that at the end of the day in terms of the answer? Well, that's the first question to be asked in this report. Uh, it's, it's what I started out the meeting with. It was the language of the BRAC Commission. So I think we have to just bring that to a uh, contingent you know, question between January of 2005 and now. We will bring that to the students. Four, uh, Randy and others raised the question of timing and the size of the the cloud, if you will, let's say the financial cloud and the cloud of uncertainty created in Southeastern Colorado. I don't know how else to do this uh, than to try to move it forward uh, in a logical and thoughtful way that ultimately will get it uh, to a conclusion. Uh, you know, if I could have done it faster, it would have happened. This is a, a good way forward with uh, an independent review for the federal powers to bring it to conclusion. Now, uh, uh, some of you raised the question about eminent domain and willing sellers. I know there's a lot of emotion in the room, and people have said there are no willing sellers. Well, I will tell you that uh, and they haven't been approached by uh, ranchers to come back holding to say, uh, yeah, uh, you know, we would be willing to do something if it would be a way that would also benefit uh, the ranching community. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if that's a leasing thing or whatever. So I think those things. As a matter of uh, protection of private property, it's something has to be examined. I mean, I don't know where we will all end up. Let's at least examine that question. Okay? Now, uh, in terms of, uh, of my own my own fight, um, yeah, it feels good. I'm spending my time getting up, saying, getting to speak, saying, uh, you know, I'm doing the right thing, you got my back. But here's the deal. I'll tell you where it gets tough. 
I walked down to that floor on the U.S. Senate chamber that day, not knowing whether I had the votes to win on our amendment. Okay. When I got down to the floor, we were behind. Okay. There were 40 some votes uh, against it, only 34. I worked that floor hard. Some of you, uh, probably many of you here, are not Hillary Clinton fans. Okay. Senator Hillary Clinton running for president, came down on the floor, and she said to me, she said, she said, how important is this to call out this important to the ranchers in Southeast Dakota? I need your vote on this. She voted for me. Okay. That's what made me the one vote head job. Okay. When all the votes were counted, okay, and this was me in the well, working and uh, breaking the arm, including getting to the second job. I had two Republicans who voted with only okay. Senator Brownback, okay, and Senator Roberts, okay. If those two senators, if those two Republican senators voted, if they had voted the other way, lot, if they had voted the other way, okay, the vote would have been opposite. We would have lost. Okay, that's how close it is that we work. So it just tells you that it is important for us to move forward in a thoughtful way to try to bring this to some conclusion. And what I will ask all of you is this. I want you all to help me. Uh, help me with your help me with your patience. We will keep you informed. Okay? Help help me as we move forward with uh, the year ahead and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, try to bring this to a conclusion that uh, makes sense uh, for all of us. Um, and let me finally just say this. Um, you know, the, the conversation that you hear from uh, many of you in terms of the concern about being the weak and the vulnerable in terms of, uh, of, of, of the voice, uh, don't ever consider yourself to be weak or strong. You know, I always say this about the water fights in the valley, you know, but we talk about the two agents, AWDI fights, so hell, I've been more fights on water than almost anybody else in the state. And I've been through so many fights, you know, especially in the valley where I know my life has been threatened many times, and I've been uh, involved in uh, taking on the kind of, uh, of arrow that uh, probably uh, would make anybody go crazy. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you think about that Sunway Valley, 40,000 people, you have a population now in the state of 4.7 million people. And yet every time that uh, that valley has taken on the rich and powerful interests from all across the school on water issues, they have been able to win. Okay. You will win. <coughs> you will win. Okay. I don't know exactly what that win is going to be, and that's why I asked that there be some patience and some, and some openness here. But the ranching community and the ranching heritage of southeastern Colorado and the economy of southeastern Colorado, I will make sure is in fact protected. And it will be protected for as long as I am the U.S. Senator and, and, and hopefully beyond because it is, is the right issue. So let me just conclude by saying thank you. Uh, thank you for, for all of you uh, for coming.